What's up everybody? P. Pardo here. Welcome to another episode of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. That's right, it's Wednesday. It's new album review day. We've got a host of really cool new albums coming up today as well as next Wednesday because all of a sudden, man, the notable releases are flying out of wherever they're coming from, hitting my mailbox. Today is no exception. We've got the 19th studio album from German heavy metal slash hard rock legends Scorpions Rock Believer out now on Virgin Berlin Records as well as Spine Farm Records. All right, if you look really closely, you can see that scorpion on her tongue, right? Kind of a cool album cover, I think. Almost like a play on Goat's Head Soup by uh, the Rolling Stones, right? There we go. There's the guys in the band on the back. Okay, open up the little digi pack here. Rock Believer. And what else we got here? Got the little booklet. There's the guys in the band once again. Klaus and company, Rudolph and Matthias is here somewhere. We got Mickey D here somewhere, right? And of course, their bass player, whose name is um, Powell Makawads on bass. Well, let me tell you something. It's not every day that you listen to a hard rock or metal album and you can hear that bass really high up in the mix, booming along. He is uh, Mr. Uh, I think I forgot his name again. Once again, already, uh, Powell Makawada. Uh, you can hear him all throughout this album. Really heavy bass tone. Quite like hearing that. Uh, the album produced by Scorpions and Buff. Whoever Buff is, right? Not familiar with him. Again, you got Klaus on vocals. You got uh, Rudolf Schenker on rhythm guitar, backing vocals. Matthias Jabs lead guitars, rhythm guitars, acoustic guitar, slide guitars. Powell Makawada on bass and Mickey D on drums. I think Mickey D is a great fit for this band. So you know, if you've been kind of uh, reading various reviews and people talking about Rock Believer all over the internet, uh, Hans Martin Buff, by the way, is the, uh, the co-producer there. It's full name. Everybody seems to be talking about this album as, you know, this is like the, the one of the greatest things the Scorpions have ever done. Best album in 40 years or, you know, 35 years, whatever, all that kind of stuff. Um, a complete return to form after many, many years of mediocrity as far as their studio releases go. I, you know, I, I've been listening to all this. I was waiting, you know, to judge it on its own merits because, you know, I, I heard the Peacemaker song, which they released early on, like a couple bunch of months ago, right, as the kind of the first single or a little teaser from the album. And I, I think Peacemaker's pretty damn good song, pretty heavy. And I figured, well, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to reserve my judgment because I can't say that I've been interested really in any Scorpions album through and through since Love at First Sting. And even now, I, I look back at Love at First Sting. I loved it back in the day. I'm not that crazy about it anymore. For me, it's almost like the last truly great Scorpions album was Blackout. And they've had plenty of great songs sprinkled throughout many, many albums. But, I mean, it's been quite a long time since anything really has caught my attention. I mean, we're looking, you know, eye to eye, Unbreakable, Humanity Hour, Sting in the Tail, Return to Forever, you know, Face the Heat, Pure Instinct. I mean, there have been really good songs on some of those albums, right? But for the most part, none of those albums to me are really all that great. So along with what I'm hearing all over the place, I had fairly high expectations of this, but I, those high expectations were kind of tempered a little bit because I'm like, all right, so are we living in a world where a pretty good Scorpions album is going to be seen as the next coming of, you know, whatever, based on how many albums we've gotten from them over the last 20 plus years that really haven't been all that great, right? So anything that's halfway decent, we're going to proclaim is the best thing they've done in 30, 40 years. So I, I kind of, that, that's kind of the mindset I went into this with. So I was like, all right, but I'm going to give it a chance because, you know, a lot of people that I know and trust their judgment are, have been saying over the last week or two or more how great this is. So I will say you've got uh, 11 tracks on here. Let's go track by track before I give you my ultimate uh, kind of review here. So Gas in the Tank is the first song on the album, which is a really good hard rocker, pretty catchy. 
What I really like about this album, I like the production. I think, like I said, you, the bass is nice, big, and beefy, and you've got some crunchy rhythm guitars and riffs and blazing Matthias Jabs guitar solos all over the album. Check one. Really good. Um, Gas in the Tank is good, good chorus. Reminds me of, like, early, mid-'80s Scorpions, which is what you want, right? Uh, Klaus sounds terrific on this album. He sounds terrific. He's another one of those guys that's just dipping into the fountain of youth. Uh, gotta love it, right? Uh, Roots in My Boots, track number two. Track number three, Knock Em Dead. Mm, I'm not nuts about either one of those. Those are okay. They're okay. They're enjoyable enough. Kind of generic, but it's Scorpions, right? It, it sounds like, you know, what you'd expect from these guys. Not bad. Then you got track number four, Rock Believer, uh, the title track, which is kind of moody, kind of atmospheric, kicks into high gear mid pace, mid, midway through the song. Uh, good chorus, memorable song. I dig it. I like Rock Believer. Shining of Your Soul, pretty good song. Not spectacular. Pretty solid. From here is where it gets really interesting. Uh, Seventh Sun, track number six, absolutely terrific. Darker, menacing, heavy. It's got nice atmosphere, cool, dirgy riffs, uh, and it's just got an old school feel. Takes me back to maybe Taken by Force or Love Drive or Animal Magnetism era Scorpions. Maybe even a little bit of the Blackout stuff. Think of like the darker stuff that they did right around that period. Love Seventh Sun. Easily my favorite song on the album. Then you got Hot and Cold. Good up tempo, heavy rocker. Like it a lot. Good chorus, great guitar licks going on all over the place. When I Lay My Bones to Rest, frantic, fast-paced Scorpions. Again, going back to Animal Magnetism Blackout. Right, Really good sound on the guitars. It's catchy, I like it a lot. Peacemaker I mentioned before is track number nine. Really good, I liked it when I first heard it. Like it even more now. Heavy, bruising, up-tempo, crushing, love it. Then you got Call of the Wild, pretty good song. All right, not one of the better ones on the album, but I think it's pretty good. Again, it's up tempo, raucous, scorpions. It's what you want. And then the the mellow track, the kind of the ballad, is safe for last. Kind of a strange thing to do here, but uh, when you know where you come from, it's really good. It's really good. It's not like winds of change type of stuff, which I'm not a fan of. This is just good, mellow, nice little uh, acoustic textures, really nice vocals from Klaus, got a really catchy chorus, but it's not overly syrupy. It, it just reminds me of when the Scorpions would do like ballad type stuff earlier in their career, like either you know, the latter part of the 70s or the early 80s. Uh, they would just be this, like this moody, atmospheric thing, but it's definitely hummable and melodic. I really like it. I think it's really good. So overall... Um, you know, I'm not going to proclaim that this is the one of their best albums ever. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I really express myself in the words here. But is it one of the best Scorpions albums since Love at First Thing? I would say yes. Is it a five star classic? No, not in my opinion anyway. Is it a really solid three and a half or four star out of five album? Absolutely, I think so. Uh, and again, it, it, we're, we're talking, you know, only had this for a little bit over multiple listens. But it's engaging, it's heavy, it's rocking, it doesn't sound... Uh, one of the, the issues I've had with a lot of Scorpions albums over the last 20 years is there's just, to me anyway, I know a lot of people like a lot of the stuff they've done over the last 20, 25 years, there's this kind of genericness about a lot of the Scorpions material that they've released of late uh, I don't get that here. It's like they really tried to go out and write songs that are going to be memorable, but are going to give the fans what they desire and what they got used to from the older material, if that makes any sense at all. So there's a there's an urgency. There's a, uh, a sense of like reckless abandon, which I really like. That was what was so great about the early Scorpion stuff. It's like you never knew where they were going to go next. And they, they got kind of formulaic after a while. And yes, while there are things happening on this album that will remind you of Scorpion stuff from the past, uh, for those of you or those of us who have kind of wanted them to get back to something like that, that's I think the reason why everybody's liking this so much because it, it's like a step back 
to like 35, 40 years ago, Scorpions. And the songs are not just a rehash. They're actually really memorable. They're pretty kick-ass. Like I said, 75% of this, I really dig a lot. I think it's really good. The other part of it is it's, it's okay, right? But uh, I think that's a lot better, for me anyway, um, of a takeaway from a Scorpions album than what I've been taking away from Scorpions album of, of, over the last, like I said, almost 30 years. Whereas it's like, maybe I like like two or three tracks and the rest of it is throwaway. Here, uh, I like the majority of it. And I think even the stuff that's not really kind of grabbing me yet might over time. So yeah, good album, good production, anthemic songs, heavy, lots of guitars, and class sounds fantastic. That's what you want, right? So uh, yeah, this late in the game, a band that was supposedly going to pack it in like, what, 10 years ago? Here they are, once again, delivering something uh, really memorable late in the game. Uh, you know, it, you know, we're off to a good start this year when you've got, you know, Saxon and Scorpions both releasing, you know, really strong albums so many years after they first came on the scene. So uh, that's a good thing. So yeah, Rock Believer, Scorpions, I dig it. Like I said, three and a half or four out of five star dig it it's good if you uh, this is probably the scorpions album that a lot of you have been waiting for for many many years uh myself included so go and check it out this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on twitter of course we're here on youtube all the damn time more new stuff coming up today we've got uh, let's see brand new steve Vai in violate we've got uh, brand new amorphous halo Brand new Star One, Revel in Time. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get to the Voivod and the Immolation, the Ten, and the Tea Party. And all, so I got a whole stack of new things that I'm going to be working on bringing you guys uh, either today or most certainly next week. So uh, you may have to wait till next Wednesday for a bunch of the other ones. But you will get a few of them from me today. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and again, if you've already heard this, let us know what you think. If you haven't, go out and listen to it, pick it up, and then report back. Let us know what you think about Scorpions, Rock Believer. I am P. Parter will see you real soon here on the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.